Boomer Bust is back with your post NFL draft rookie super flex mock draft. We're going to get right into it. Bryce, you were first up in this draft. It's just the three of us. We went Bryce, me, Sully, uh, and just picked the top 24 players. So starting it off, Caleb Williams. Bryce, why is he your number one? We probably don't have to talk about him a whole lot, but um, where are we at? Yeah, I mean, this is a no-brainer for, I think, most Superflex uh, League drafts. Uh, Caleb Williams is arguably put in the best situation any first overall quarterback has ever been drafted in. Um, and contrary to what a lot of, I guess, haters believe, I do think he is a generational talent at the quarterback position. He can make the acrobatic throws. Um, he, he's just super talented, best quarterback in this draft. So, And he's put in a great situation with all of his weapons. Um, he could easily break every rookie quarterback record this year and probably a lot of Bears uh, franchise records just in his first year. So uh, easy, easy pick for me at the at the 101 in a super flex league. Sully, what thoughts do you have on Caleb Williams real quick? I agree with pretty much everything Bryce just said. I think Caleb's a – I don't know about generational, but he's good enough to be – warrant this selection. And the only other quarterback I can think of that was put into a situation similar to this was maybe Andrew Luck in Indianapolis. But uh, Caleb's got it all. He can do everything. I think that that offense has improved in general. And the weapons he has there, I, I, this is an easy pick for me. This is what same exact pick I would make. Yeah, to your point, Bryce, about you know the situation, the, the biggest concern, and this is what I was saying all along with, you know, in, in terms of him and Fields, is you have the same type of concerns, right? Play with Playing within the pocket mm -hmm. and on time. Well, that helps a lot when you have three weapons. Well, I mean, really five weapons in the passing game that are solid with Gerald Everett, Cole Komet, and then the big three receivers. Um, he's not going to have to do everything himself like he did at USC. And I think that's the big difference and is, and is also weird to say because as a Bears fan, <laughs> this is completely different. I mean, when you think about it, they did more in this draft that they only had four picks to support Caleb Williams than they did in the three years for Justin Fields while he was there. Right. Like, Without question. They, they, they really, this is different than any situation we've ever seen, especially with the bears. Um, so I agree while Caleb may not end up being the, the fucking LeBron James of the NFL or whatever you want to call him. Like some people hype him up to be mm -hmm. um, he's above average skill set and should be with the talent that's around him starting off his career. And, and hopefully that just helps him ascend. Um, but second up another, you know, pretty clear cut pick is mine taking Marvin Harrison jr. Um, the wide receiver that can do it all. He can win contested. He can run routes. He's fast. He's big. It, there's just nothing to not like about Marvin Harrison jr. Unless you're concerned that he didn't go to the combine. It obviously didn't hurt his draft stock. The guy didn't do okay, anything shit. this off season for anybody. <laughs> and he's still the number four pick in the NFL draft. It's just, you know, I, I like the other wide receivers in this class, but I cannot get, I, I cannot get to the point where I'm taking Malik neighbors or Roma Dunze over Marvin Harrison. I think he's got the highest floor. I think the other two guys do have similar ceilings, but I do think that he has the highest floor. So he's he's my number one there, uh, wide receiver, and I'm taking him at number two in in my tight end, or my super flex straps for sure. Sully, what do you think about Marvin Harrison? Is he your number two? And uh, yeah, he he is with a bullet. I think he's the only one in this draft that could potentially we could see going in other super flex drafts at the one position because I think he's set up for success so well. You know, um, DeAndre Hopkins' best seasons of his career came with Kyler Murray, and Kyler Murray's best seasons of his career came with DeAndre Hopkins. So Marvin Harrison slides into, what does he slide into, 180 targets? Like, I, I think he's got the pedigree. He's done everything that anybody could ask him for. He's been the top wide receiver in this class probably for three or four years. And the biggest thing that I'll always go back to with Marvin Harrison Jr. is when they asked all the Ohio State receivers between Garrett Wilson uh, help me out. Who are the other two studs? Chris Olave, Jackson, 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 Jackson Smith, Smith, and Jigba. Right. So they asked those three, which one of you guys is the best? And they all said, Harrison's the best of us all. And he was a true freshman at that time, barely playing. So 
it's easily Marvin Harrison Jr. in the two spot for me here. Yeah, I, I agree completely. He's arguably the one 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 if you're like really really set at the quarterback position. Um, obviously, I'd look to trade back to someone that needed one. But yep. I think what what we see with these first two guys is in a long time. I think these are two players that I would really say are almost bust proof. I, I don't think they come into the league and 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 just fizzle out in any way, shape, or form. Sure, they couldn't live up to their potential ceiling like every rookie that's ever been drafted, but they're going to have some sort of role on whatever team they play, which will translate into a valuable fantasy role uh, on your on your rosters. And next up is, is Sully's pick, and this was kind of one of my questions was going to be, uh, Jaden Daniels goes three here, Sully. Is there any situation where you would take him over – Marvin Harrison Jr. at number two, or is that pretty much locked up the top two and then then Jaden comes in at number three? For me personally, it, this is pretty chalk. This is how I've ranked it. This is how I would roll it with these three. I think there are some scenarios out there where one could make an argument that Jaden Daniels, if things fall correctly, might be the better fantasy quarterback than Caleb Williams just because of what he can do on the ground. I just think there's a ton more risk baked into him than there is to Caleb when you look at the things that are around him the offense everything else so Washington's brand new we don't know what they're going to be um if I was I don't know it's it's hard for me to answer because I'm always going to take who I think the best available player is in a rookie draft and I'll figure it out later but I I can see scenarios and situations where if you're playing in a super flex league and you're you know you're really hurting at the quarterback position that you would take Daniels at two over Harrison. I totally get that. For me, I think three's a sweet spot in these drafts. Let the other two people figure out what you're going to do. Like if your consolation prize is Jaden Daniels at three spot, this guy's a one one in almost every other draft in recent memory. So um, I'm happy with him here and, and I would easily take him at three and I don't think I would take him over the other two. No. Uh, yeah, this my top three in, in Superflex for me is set in stone. I, I honestly don't even care what my roster uh, looks like. If anything, I, I would trade back to, to ben, depending on what, what are my needs. But 1-1 one, one is Caleb or, or Marvin, and then the 1-1 one, 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 and 1-2, one, I'm sorry. And then the 1-3 is always Jaden Daniels for me. Um, so that it's it's after this pick where it gets sticky for me because obviously Jaden Daniels has the ceiling of Lamar, right? The way he plays, uh, the way he runs the ball and, and things like that. So I could see why people really, really like him and how he could be a better fantasy producer um, several, several years of his career if it, if it lasts long enough than, than a guy like Caleb Williams. But the thing we see with these running quarterbacks is they're injured much more often in their careers. Th- their careers as a very valuable fantasy asset or much shorter. So uh, I don't see that with Caleb Williams. I don't see that with Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, short, shorter career. So I would take the less risky option with those two. And then I'll take that, that really high ceiling with Jaden Daniels at three and be very happy with it. He does need to learn how to get down and avoid hits though. Like we yes. saw that with Anthony Richardson last yep. year, and he's a way bigger body than Jalen Daniels. And Daniels took some nasty hits in college. These guys hit hard and they hit for keeps. So get down, Jaden, get down. For, for me, I have Jaden in that tier with Neighbors and Odunze, so I can see him going anywhere from three here all the way to five, um, depending on what you need. I think they're all very close, and I think those wide receivers are a safer pick um, because I think their floor is higher uh, than Daniels. I think, obviously, Daniels with the, the way that he plays, I think, he's, I think he's really good in the pocket. I think he might be the most like pocket-ready out of the guys. Um, has played a lot of football. Um, you know, a lot of these guys are older. We've seen a lot of, you know, older QB prospects here over the past couple of years because of the COVID year. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that gets them a little more maturation before they come into the league. We talk all the time about, you know, wanting them to sit for a year um, yeah. behind some veteran guys, but, you know, an extra year. Um, or two to mature in college is is not a bad thing either and actually get to play and get those reps and everything. So I think that's a value as well um, for all these quarterbacks in this in this draft or the, the ones that are a little bit older that people talk about. Like, I, I don't care that some of these guys are going to be 26 by the time they hit their second, third year. Um, give me that mature guy. If they're balling, they're balling, right? So uh, I'm with you except for I could just see based on team 
with as close as those guys are, they're all in a tier for me. So I can see any of them going, which is where Bryce comes in with the next pick with Malik neighbors. Um, was there any thought between him and Odunze of which one you were going to take, or is it clear neighbors and then Odunze for you, Bryce? It's not, it's not clear. Um, but I think 60 to 70% of the time I'm taking neighbors here. If I've got a lot of drafts with this four spot, I could see myself taking Odunze maybe in a spot or two of them, but majority of the time I'm taking neighbors. Um, and, and I think we'll see him slide in a lot of, a, a lot of people's drafts just based on the landing spot, but people do not, do not let that, um, deter, de, for you from the talent that we see because the NFL is forever changing. And Daniel Jones is on the shortest leash possible. If he sucks next year, he won't be thrown to Malik neighbors next year. And, and talent always eventually prevails. Um, so even then, like who else are they going to give the ball to? He's going to get targets this year. Um, he and I think Darren Waller stay in another year. So I, I really think that if Marvin Harrison Jr. Wasn't in this draft, Malik neighbors, we'd be talking about Malik neighbors in this two spot more often than, than we are. So I think the talent's there. This guy broke all of LSU's receiving records. I mean, you got to think of the people that were there before him, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. Of course, the offense is, was the most exciting in college football this last season, so there's a lot of yards and touchdowns to go around. But he was getting the bulk of it. So um, he's good. he's a super talented guy, and, and he'll, you'll find him being a bigger role in your, in your fantasy offense uh, sooner rather than later, even with the Giants as a terrible landing spot. Sully, what are your thoughts on the Lake Neighbors? I think he's rock solid and arguably, like, honestly, coming into this, him and Marvin Harrison were very tight together for for me pre-draft. And then Adunze was in a tier by himself, even that much closer behind the two. But to your point about landing spot, so if, if you earned this 104 by not being the greatest team in your dynasty league, you got time. This pick isn't solving everything for you, and you're not winning the ship just because you added whoever in this spot, right? So pick who I feel is the best player available here, which is the leak neighbors. A Dunze is very, very close. And if you took a Dunze here, I'm not going to be even remotely upset because they both make sense. But he's still going to be a guy that gets targeted a ton, to your point. Hell, you know, it could be Drew Locke throwing the football, which would actually be better for the leak neighbors than Daniel Jones. But he's wow. going to get targeted. He's going to play a lot. Um, He's Odell Beckham Jr.-ish light in, in this offense. He's a highly touted rookie coming in to this offense from that school into that city. Like, I think it's a great spot for him and everybody around him in that organization. Easy pick for me here. Um, comfortable with him, I should say. Not easy. I would battle between the other those two receivers, but super comfortable taking him at the four spot without a doubt. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I have all the same thoughts. I, when he was drafted there, you know, we had a pretty good idea that he might go there. There was a lot of discussion um, uh, of him falling there, but uh, I was hoping immediately that it would be an AJ Brown situation to Tennessee, right? When he dropped yep. to the back end of the first uh, uh, round of rookie drafts, because Marcus Mariota was the quarterback. He was in Tennessee. They didn't throw the ball a lot. There was all kinds of reasons why AJ Brown couldn't be good. Um, and he was still good with Tennessee. Um, and we saw a quarterback change there real fast with Ryan Tannehill right. coming in midway through that first season and, and all of that. So we know that it changed. So that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping that he would be a guy that would drop the quarterbacks would pass him up, you know, even Rome passing them up. It doesn't look like that's what's going to happen because I think people realize one thing Daniel Jones is good at is throwing a deep ball. Um, and the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that Daniel Jones hasn't had a weapon in the passing game in his career. This is the best receiver they've had since Odell coming in in his first start. He'll be the most talent they've had at wide receiver since Odell played there. And, and it's not, you're not throwing to, there's been stretches where Darius Slayton was valuable or startable, even if it was only a flex option with Daniel Jones at quarterback in New York. Now you put neighbors in there. He can win deep. That's one thing that Daniel Jones can do is throw the, throw the deep ball. Um, but he can win in every way on the field, which is going to be really, really big for them. And we've seen a lot of like slot type receivers have a lot of success with Daniel Jones as well. So, whether Daniel Jones is a good football player or not, Neighbors is going to get a shit ton of targets because, like you said, there's nobody else there. 
and he can turn them into magic. So um, I'm, I, he did not move a bit for me. Um, you know, Rome does kind of gain a little bit because if he would have went to, let's say Tennessee, um, I would have had more concerns about him. Um, but, uh, he is my next pick. The, the number six or number five in the draft. Uh, and I'll tell you what, like, obviously as a Bears fan, we were seeing it to number nine, um, and quite a few mocks. There was still a lot that had him going in different spots ahead of that. So I wasn't sure that we were going to get him, but I recommend if you have not looked at Matt Harmon's reception perception on um, Roma Dunze, do that. Um, he, you know, Matt had him right there with Marvin Harrison. And over uh, the past, I think he does four seasons, uh, it went Marvin Harrison Jr., Jamar Chase, and then Roma Dunze for his top three receivers in that stretch. So, um, yeah, R Rome's the guy here. Easy for me. Uh, you know, you could make arguments for the quarterbacks again, like we talked about. I think if, if people really need quarterback in these spots, there are a couple guys that can go, but the way everything's set up in Chicago, he's tied to Caleb Williams for, you know, at least the next five years. And then, you know, you would anticipate them trying to lock them up and having that long Marvin Harrison, Peyton Manning type uh, career together. So um, Rome's locked in at number five for me. Uh, Bryce, what are your thoughts on Rome and and what's maybe slightly here behind um, that you maybe consider going over him if there's anything? I don't – I mean, depending on your league's format, if there's a super flex – you could maybe consider Brock Bowers here, but I'm not. I think the top five for you me. You mean a tight end premium? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. But the top five for me are kind of set in stone. So the five pick is almost like made for you, in my opinion. So whatever falls to you in, the, in these top five of the guys we just mentioned, it's like an easy pick for me. Um, so that, that makes it a lot less, a lot less stressful. And you're kind of happy with whatever you get. Cause I think Roma Dunes at pick, at pick five is some tremendous value. Probably the best, one of the best values you're going to get in the first round, if not the best. Um, like, cause like I said, I really kind of value him and neighbors very, very closely. I just prefer neighbors a little bit. And I, I have since the draft and I don't let landing spots uh, change that for me because like I said, the landscapes ever changing, but for Romo Dunze, it's probably not. So that's, that's always kind of nice to have that security. And that's the, that's kind of the thing we've liked about like Jamar chase too. We know that his quarterback for the first four years of his career is going to be Joe Joe Burrow, and now we see that with Odunze and Caleb Williams. So hopefully their their talent in college translates well to the NFL because that could be a deadly duo uh, moving forward for not only fantasy purposes for the, but for the league itself. Sully. Yeah, I don't really have much more to say. Roma Odunze was Daniel Jeremiah's top wide receiver in this class, so um, I don't personally agree with that. I think Marvin Harrison and Malik Neighbors are a a tick above him, but that just goes to as speaks to how good of a player this really is. You're getting a player at five here that most years you would have to take probably as early as two. So I think, you know, other than the Jamar Chase year and the year before that, all three of these guys would be the top ranked wide receiver coming out if they were by themselves. So I think what's interesting to me about Rome is I could see a little bit of a JSN factor here because there's so many other targets in that offense. I think if anything, he's, this is probably the guy I'm looking to add in season in dynasty more than anyone else, because I expect him to not really produce a ton early. Um, rookies typically don't anyway. He has a rookie quarterback and he's sharing an offense with three or four other really talented players. So I think a Dunze doesn't reach his potential until back into year one year two so absolutely taking him here at five and i'm being patient with him but if you have an owner that takes him and isn't patient with him jump all over it and try to get a hold of this guy all right sully you're going with a little bit of a hometown pick here jj mccarthy quarterback vikings um goes number 10 overall so we're we're drafting him here ahead of drake may who obviously went number three why are you drafting him here at six Ahead of somebody like Drake May that went top three in the draft 
And uh, how are you feeling as Vikings fan having McCarthy come in to take over that role um, from Kirk Cousins as the franchise quarterback? Well, I'm taking him here because I had him ranked ahead of me coming into the draft anyway. So um, I like his intangibles. And, and I think a lot gets made of the fact that he didn't do a whole lot in Michigan. But what he did do is he converted third and fourth down at the highest rate of any quarterback in this class. He's incredibly talented on the run while he's moving. He can create, he can keep the ball, or he can keep the plays alive, which I really enjoy watching him in, on the film that I saw. As a Vikings fan, I'm happy. I think he... Other than Caleb, this is the best landing spot for a quarterback. You've got Jeff Jordan Addison. Uh, hopefully, we signed Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson at some point. I think Aaron Jones is a quietly nice little asset for a quarterback, whether it's Darnold or JJ coming out of the backfield. So I think we're in a good spot here. And I personally, as a Vikings fan, love the pick. It's the guy who I wanted all along. And... I think we just have to be a little bit patient. I would love to see Darnold play for the majority of the season, if not all of it. I'm fine if if JJ sits on the bench and learns under Kevin O'Connell and in that offense. So pretty happy with the pick. I'd be very happy with the pick at six in a, in a dynasty rookie draft as well. What do you think, Bryce? Yeah, I, I'm kind of vice versa when it comes to who I liked pro, uh, before the draft. Um, I liked Drake May a little more than JJ McCarthy. It wasn't by miles or anything like that. Um, and that just that's just because I think that McCarthy could be a um, JJ McCarthy could be a very good NFL quarterback. I just don't know if it's going to translate well into the NFL um, as a or I'm sorry as a fantasy player with him being kind of a game manager esque type of type of quarterback for me. I just don't see big flashy numbers. You could argue that he got put in a better spot than um, than Caleb Williams when it comes to the talent around him. He top five tight end, arguably, with the best wide receiver in the league. And Jordan Addison uh, quickly was a huge impact as a, as a rookie. So very, very great landing spot for, for J.J. McCarthy. It couldn't have got any better. So, yeah, I, I, I like him as like a quarterback, too, in, in, in leagues. But I, I liked Drake May as a, as a overall prospect. But right now, as it looks... J.J. McCarthy could easily be producing at a higher level fantasy-wise than than Drake May just because of the talent around him. So I don't hate this pick at, at pick six. I think we can start looking at our team at rosters here and pick – there's a lot of guys I think you can pick de team dependent here. So whether it's Brock Bowers who who ends up going next here or or a different quarterback and, and Drake May depending on, on how you rank these guys before the draft. Because, again, landing spot for me isn't as important because if you're picking here – more than likely, this this player might not put you over the top. I mean, it's definitely possible. You're kind of a middle-of-the-pack team, I guess. But um, I, I'll go with the, the more talented player here. But, again, these guys are kind of ranked very, very closely for me. So I can't really argue either way. Rick? For me, it's – I'm probably 50-50, right? If I'm taking a quarterback and I'm on the clock and both May and McCarthy are there, I'm probably going 50-50 picking, you know – if I have three or four of them, I'm picking JJ and two in May and two. Um, JJ's biggest, I think one of his biggest concerns is finding touch on his throws. I think that's the one thing he's missing. Sure. I don't blame a guy for the, the offensive system that he's in, right? Like we, we had this discussion about Russell Wilson for a long time in Seattle where he didn't throw a lot, but he was uber efficient. And I think that's what you get. You get the Brock Purdy, Russell Wilson, um, you know, type play from J.J. McCarthy, where maybe he throws 25 times a game, but he's really efficient. The one thing, I think the Bears have more offensive talent overall, right? Obviously, Justin Jefferson is the, the best wide receiver, but I think the Bears are just deeper when you can go two tight ends deep and you can go three wide sure. receivers deep. You're sitting pretty good. But what the Bears do not have is Kevin O'Connell. And I trust Kevin O'Connell with quarterbacks just about as much as anybody in the league. So I think J.J. is coming into a spot where he's got the right mentor, um, and he's got the talent around him, so he's he's not in a terrible situation. And for development, I'm more confident in that for McCarthy to um, be good in three to four years than I am any quarterback outside of Caleb Williams in this draft. Um, Washington, the obviously it's new ownership, new front office, but that 
organization has been a mess for a long time. They do have some talent at wide receiver pass catchers though. So, so Jaden's not in the worst spot that I've seen for a number two overall quarterback. Um, but right now we're looking at the Patriots, Drake may, what is he going to have to throw to, um, you know, Nick's has some options in Denver, but they're in such a shit spot because they're paying 85 million to a guy that's not there. Um, so they can't fill out the whole roster. So when I look at all that stuff, and then obviously you have you have Penix with the uh, you know Kirk Cousins ahead of him and everything, but nice talent, and I think that team is going in the right direction. But JJ's got like all of it. He's got the talent. He's got the right coaches, and he's going to play early in his career as well. I do agree. If I I don't think it needs to be the whole rookie season because I think. McCarthy can already operate that offense as a rookie that doesn't try to do too much, keeps it everything in line. I think that's the good. It's a positive for me that he wasn't asked to do all that stuff because my worries about Caleb and about Jaden are that they're trying to do too much because that's sometimes what they did in college, just because they were so much better than everybody else on the field. JJ already knows how to operate in that tempoed offense where there's a purpose to it and he's playing within the system. So I think that helps him move into the pros a lot more. And, and again, with Kevin O'Connell and what they've done and, and with the coaching staff there in Minnesota, I think he's got the best coaching staff around him out of all the rookies, uh, you know, with the bears to be determined because we, we just don't know a lot of those guys are new. Uh, well, with a lot of these organizations that are taking quarterbacks, the the people are new, right? So uh, that's what I really like about J.J. McCarthy there. And then, Bryce, we move to Brock Bears. We, we've barely said anything bad about any of these prospects. That's the fun thing about this freaking draft, man, mm-hmm. is that there's so many good prospects. So um, it's awesome to not have to, like, talk down on a bunch of guys. To you Remember, like, the draft where we had Sterling Shepard and Cole – what was it? Coleman and – uh, Dotson and and there was not a lot of good things you could say about a lot of the prospects in that one. This is completely different, so it's fun. So Brock Bowers, number seven pick, first round. Yeah, this is this this is where I see him falling between one six one eight uh, in most leagues. I, I I really doubt we see him go anywhere before. Maybe maybe occasionally there's going to be outliers, of course, but I think majority of the time we're going to see him fall in this this range right here. Um, I think this guy slides in as a top. Easily for me, a top five dynasty tight end. I think he's he's going to come into the league and immediately make a make a splash. I know maybe some people don't like the landing spot because the Raiders were kind of one of those teams that were going to be looking to draft a quarterback, whether it was like McCarthy, Penix Jr. But they just got put in a situation where they were all gone. Like they there was nobody left by the time they did, so they just took the best available and and man, they got some value in the real NFL draft. And this, this goes to show they're riding with Aiden O'Connell to start the season. They have a very solid backup in Gardner Minshew when you're talking about somebody that can feed fantasy-relevant players. Um, we saw Michael Pittman Jr. playing at a, a high level last year, uh, especially when it came to fantasy numbers and things like that. That's very good for Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, and Brock Bowers. That's even more weapons on this offense when it comes to the receiving game. And uh, we saw last year that they kind of were trying to implement Michael Mayer more as the season went along, and obviously – they want to run maybe a two tight end set or they just this talent was just too good to pass up. But Brock Bowers is going to be implemented into this offense very early into the season. Um, I think this guy is is one of the one of the three players in this draft class that'll have that could have a much larger impact right away on your fantasy teams. When, when I'm talking about him, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams, I think these, those three guys could be day one huge players for your fantasy team to turn your franchise around. So uh, easy, easy pick uh, for me here. And it's even easier in a, in a super, or I mean a tight end premium league as well. So Sully, do you disagree with, uh, with Brock Bowers here? Is he, does he make a day one impact or does he maybe have that rookie progression that you see majority of the time with tight ends? Or does he kind of do a, a Sam Laporta type of, maybe not quite the same, but impact it right away your fantasy roster. I see him having more of a, Dalton Kincaid rookie season than a Sam Laporta rookie season. Laporta scored 10 touchdowns, mm-hmm. and I don't think that's going to happen yeah, here. Further um, personally, I would take Drake May here. I would take a quarterback over the tight end, even in a tight end premium. That said, um, you know me, I'm not one to get too excited about a rookie tight end. Ugh. So I have a little bit of scars and a little bit of sh- sticker shock from the Kyle Pitts uh, draft, but 
True. I think Bowers is in a really good spot. I don't mind the landing spot at all. I think Mayer can run as your traditional tight end. Bowers can be a kind of more of a slot guy. This guy's unbelievable with the ball in his hands after the catch. Probably the best tight end I've ever seen in, in terms of yak uh, coming out of college. And I think that this is bad news for Jacoby Myers more than anyone on that roster. But I think that Brock Bowers is rock solid here. Personal personal draft preference, I would take the quarterback over the tight end here, but I wouldn't get too upset if some if he fell to me at seven. Not at all. Brock Bowers is the top tight end prospect I've evaluated. I mean, Kyle Pitts was good. I think Brock Bowers is better. If I was an NFL team and I had the first pick out of just tight ends, Brock Bowers would be the tight end that I went with to start an NFL franchise. I over won't Laporta? argue against. Uh, yeah, I think Brock wow. Bowers is every bit as good. Um, and sure. I think he's going to be uh, – I, I, we're going to see the same stuff out of him that I think we've seen out of Jimmy Graham, where people are saying this is a tight end that's out wide more. Um, gets yep. into argument, I want to be paid like a wide receiver, not a not a tight end. Um, yep. So, you know, I'm not going to argue, and, and I might even have Laporta in my dynasty rankings uh, ahead of him a little bit, but – uh, I think Brock Bowers could easily be the best tight end in the league as soon as 2025. Um, you know, no different than Laporta coming in last year, and now everybody's got him. You know, Trey McBride moved up after his rookie year. We're seeing rookie years from tight ends over the past couple that are better. I mean, just looking at last year, you also had um, uh, what's his name from Green Bay, Luke Musgrave, that was having a pretty solid start to his career before he got injured and missed some time. Dalton Kincaid, as the season went on, he was a big part of that offense. So we're seeing tight ends impact quicker. Even even Kyle Pitts in his rookie year, right? Like you weren't upset, you didn't feel bad until after his second year, and then after no. his third year, it got worse. So, uh, yeah. I think Brock Bowers comes in. I think he could very well be the number two option on that offense from day one. Devontae Adams, then him, then Jacoby Myers. Um, so Brock Bowers for me, one seven. I'm if, if you want to lock up that tight end, I'm 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 fine with it. But I do agree that in a lot of spots, I probably am taking Drake May over him just because of the position, the position, the quarterback position, and I do have them, you know, in that same tier. So yeah, that's where that's where I'm at with Brock. I think he's awesome. I've been saying it for a while. He's my number one. Like he's, I wish I could get him on teams. I'm probably not going to have him in very many spots. But uh, Brock Bowers is a dude for sure. But I do take Drake May at the next pick. My biggest concern, listen, Drake May, and it's funny because he's going like right in the same range as Josh Allen went in rookie drafts his rookie year. Um, and there's a lot of the same concerns, right? Like inconsistent passer. He's got. He's big. He can run. He can do a lot of the stuff. Um, we have this. I have the same concerns with him, though. But if he figures that out, like Josh Allen has figured out, he becomes one of the you know most talented quarterbacks in in the league. Um, so again, I think there's more. Uh, I I take JJ over him because I think JJ's floor is higher, and yeah, uh, sure. Drake May has the you know we're taking the risk. The, the high risk, high reward player here. There's a lot of upside with him, but there's also the, he's not starting four years from now. He's on a different team as a backup. Like we've seen with Justin Fields and those 2021 quarterbacks. Nice so, um, but here I'm taking him or Brian Thomas jr. Those are the two that I'm considering in this spot, but Drake may is, is my pick here. Sully, Sully, Drake, we'll save the Patriots fan for last. I think what uh, – I see a lot of Jordan Love comparison here. I see a quarterback that struggled the year he came out but was really good the year before he came out, same as Drake May. Um, their offense was horrific in North Carolina last year. Their offensive line was terrible. Their offensive coordinator was even worse, and he had basically no one to throw the football to. And that kid still created and, and made plays and played a little bit of hero ball. Like you keep hearing the knock on him as he plays too much hero ball. He had no choice. And he's 21 years old. It seems like we're, we're, we're in a new era in New England where, you know, someone might give a shit about you as a human being as well as a football player. I think he's in a really good spot, and I think he'll be, he'll be just fine. And 
Much like I don't care about Malik Neighbors going to the Giants and not being in the greatest offense, I don't care about Drake May going to New England because he's going to help kickstart that team into becoming a better offense as long as the organization can put proper coaching and develop him. That's my only concern. So, like I said, I would have taken him over Bowers here. I think Drake May is the first quarterback taken in rookie drafts in, what, the last three years if he was in those classes? So he's the fourth guy coming off the board here. So super comfortable with him. At 1-8, easy. Yeah, I, I like him in this area. I think we're going to see a lot of – a lot these last three picks, I think we're going to see in this in these three spots um, all maybe in a different order. But um, Drake May is going to – my concern for him is is the same as Mac Jones, and that's that I hope he doesn't come in and start week one. Um, I think that they need to take pressure off of a guy like this who's been in a tough situation in college the past couple of years and don't put him in a tough situation in the NFL – and make winning super important. Like, let Jacoby Brissett go in there. The Patriots aren't going to be good. They're going to have a losing record. They're probably going to be drafted in the top 10 next year, and I'm okay with that. Put him in when winning isn't a priority anymore, and it's more of developing as the priority. Um, right. And that's where I think we're going to see see him thrive more as a, as a quarterback when you take that pressure off of him as a as a winner. Um, let's just see him get better better every week. Obviously, the the, tar- the talent around him is okay, but there's you know there's no true number one player to be you know lean on things like that. They got a lot of decent wide receiver twos and wide receiver threes on the team, um, so we'll see who can get you know. Hopefully that that helps him in his decision making. When you got all these guys that are very similar, you know, find the guy that's getting open rather than forcing the ball to the best player. So um, yeah, he seems like a very boomer bust player to me as well. Kind of like that Josh Allen prospect. It's like oh, his ceiling's through the roof, but you know his floor is not in the league in two or three years. So um, I, I like, I like him here because, you know, at one, what is this one eight? Your, your roster is yep. probably pretty decent. So taking that risk of a, of a quarterback, you know, is a huge upside because your roster is right there, probably in the playoffs um, competing. So, it, it, you know, if he develops into a Josh Allen esque player, that's huge for your roster. And, and, you know, like a JJ McCarthy earlier is probably, a better pick because you you need somebody that's gonna you know be more of a staple on your team that you is less likely to bust. So I like I like these the the landing spots here in this draft for those those two type of quarterbacks that are ranked very closely. He could easily Nate. be your QB three, right? Picking yeah. an eight. Yeah. yeah. So that's oh, yeah. that's a great that's a great spot yeah. to be in. I would like yeah, JJ yeah. and him to be QB threes on, on my respective rosters picking, you know Agreed. ideally. Ideally. Um, the, the, the big thing Drake's going to have to do before he gets on the field is clean up the footwork, right? Like he's going to have to get his mechanics in line. That's the big thing that he's got to do. And I do hope that they work on that and they get that stuff sound before they throw him in because, you know, watching with, with Justin in Chicago, when, if you're on the run, if your weapons aren't getting open and you don't have the mechanics down, that's when bad stuff happens. So, um, I'm hoping they do work. You know, obviously he's got all summer to work on that too. But I hope they really get that stuff in line, the mechanics in line before they they throw him in with a with a roster that's not as talented as some of these other guys. I would say, out of the quarterbacks that we've talked about, he does have the fourth most talent around him out of the four that we've talked about so far. Oh yeah. So yeah. I Except I would be very concerned. First round. <laughs> yeah, I would be I would be really worried about throwing him out there before he's ready and before you have the yeah. talent to support him. Um, so like you said, if they pick top 10 next, next year, maybe they get that wide receiver. Yeah, There's going to be some good wide receivers next year, right? Egbuka yeah. might be up there in the, the top 10. Um, so you might have that option to get that, that guy to pair with him next year. If you, if you treat this rookie year, um, the right way. So I'm with you on that. Um, next up Sully though, you go a guy that I think, I think we're going to see in some drafts him go crazy high. I think yeah. we're going to see him go ahead of neighbors and Odunze in some drafts Ooh. just because he got drafted by the chiefs. That's good for There's us. That Tyreek Hill um, vibe with him because he, he ran the fastest 40 ever at the, the combine Xavier worthy wide receiver chiefs at nine. Why are you taking him at nine? Um, and would you think about taking him higher or are there any other guys that you had considered with him here at the nine pick? So I wouldn't take him any higher than this. And I took him here just to kind of spice this up and have a little bit more fun with this. Um, there's probably five guys here I would consider in this spot. So I think this is a, 
you know, w- much like the NFL draft was pretty chalk at the beginning this season, I think most rookie drafts will be as well. And then things get kind of interesting between picks six and 12, and then even into the early second round. I like Worthy. I don't care how fast he ran at the combine. I really don't. It's not a track and field competition in the NFL. But what I really like about him is he's an elite, elite, elite route runner. And he's playing with the best quarterback in football. And I just think that there's an opportunity here for him to be proficient in his rookie season. He's not Tyreek Hill. There's no way he's Tyreek Hill. But he he's insulated a bit too, right? Kelsey is still there. Rashi Rice, I think, is going to be there. They brought in Hollywood Brown, which helps him. There's just a lot of opportunity for him to be okay in his offense. And again, this is not a guy that I think is going to be a league winner. But if I'm picking in and around 9 to 12, where I see him going, my team's probably pretty good. So uh, I, I just see there's a ton of upside here. This kid could take the top off and score. He can also get open in tight spaces. He can get open in a phone booth. So I, I just really like it when you pair him with the quarterback here. I definitely co- considered a couple of different wide receivers over him here and a quarterback who we'll talk about later. Bryce? Yeah, I think Xavier Worthy here is a very appropriate uh, pick. Um, and I, I, not saying I would take him here, There's, but there's a lot of guys very closely right after that we're going to talk about that I would I would take here as, as well. But it's all, they're all so close. I think it's just, you know, pick your preference uh, as a as someone who's done their own uh, done their own research but i think that this player and a player we'll talk about later uh, like rick said we're going to see taken and erratically like we're going to see him way too high maybe probably not too low but we're going to see him picked way further than he should have been cuz i don't think i take him any earlier than this pick i think this is the earliest i would take him as well like you did sully um and and of course i'd take him in a couple picks later cuz then i don't see him falling after that but i think we're going to see him and another player taken in the top 6 um in some of these super flex drafts expect, depending on who you play with maybe people that haven't done as much research but they're going to take into account that landing spot more than more than the maybe the talent of the other players that we've chosen in front of them so far but i do like Xavier Worthy i liked both um Texas wide receivers this draft but i like Xavier Worthy the the most with the speed and the and the route running i think is great um the door's blown wide open on his um, on his potential year one because of the R- Rasheed Rice situation. I think Marquise Brown is going to come in there and and play a bigger role than maybe people think um, as a as a route runner and a very speedy guy himself. Um, that that Chiefs offense somehow after winning the Super Bowl somehow got a lot scarier um, in this offseason and in this draft. Crazy, hey? Yeah, great. Yeah, for me, for me, I'm not <clears throat> my nine. Stayed my nine, right? My top mm-hmm. nine were the the eight guys that we've already taken, and then um, Brian Thomas. So I'm taking Brian Thomas in this spot. Um, yeah, we'll definitely. talk about him later. Um, but you know, you can't you can't deny the value of being in the Chiefs' offense, but at the same time, you can't overvalue these guys either, right? The guys ahead of him are more talented. Xavier Worthy's been in this space, right? Late first rounder and super flex. People were already talking about him in that space. But what you can't do is what we did with CEH and let the Chiefs landing spot take you from, you know, the 10th, 11th, 12th best overall rookie ADP, whatever, and then make him a top 12 pick in the NFL in in, in startup drafts like we did with CEH, right? So (coughs) I seriously think you're going to see drafts where he goes 103. I yeah. think you're going to see it. I think people are going to value that landing spot so much. And you think it's crazy, but again, CEH turned into a top 12 overall pick in Dynasty Startups because of the Chiefs hype um, that came around him. And they were basically taken around the same pick in the NFL draft. So I, I um, think we all, we'd sort of overvalue the running back position, which did that as well. So I don't see Xavier getting to that heights, but... I agree with what you're saying. People will pick him up there because he's tied with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. I, I will, I will guarantee we will see that. Um, not, you know, it, when we're talking about the public, we got to remember also a lot of the leagues we're in are diehard. Yeah. Guys, like you said, Bryce earlier, there's no off season public right. leagues the, 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 a lot, or, or just like the, the less serious dynasty leagues, people are going to, people are definitely going to be taking him much higher. Um, I don't have a lot of knocks on the guy, but it's just 
I'm not letting that Chiefs landing spot push him too far up for me. Brian Thomas was my clear top uh, or my clear fourth wide receiver for um, basically the past like four or five weeks. So none of that changed for me. He was still the fourth guy off the board. Um, but he is your next pick, Bryce. So what is it that you like about Brian Thomas and the Jacksonville Jaguars? Um, I like the landing spot. I like the player. I, I just like everything. I think he walks onto this team and is the best wide receiver, but he's not going to have to be used as such right away either. I think Christian Kirk and, and Gabe Davis can be good good players to kind of put in front of him and, and, and let him eventually t- let the talent take over um, and, and him inevitably be the best wide receiver on that team because um, those two guys are, are number two wide receivers for me on an NFL roster where Brian Thomas Jr. has the talent to be – the best wide receiver on that team. So um, I'm, I'm also more than likely taking him at 109 over Xavier Worthy. Um, I think we can look at rosters here too. It's like, man, am I, I'm a one big, if I get one big player to really take me over the top, Xavier Worthy has that upside being on the Chiefs. So I could see, you know, you want to gamble a little bit, especially if you're sitting pretty good at wide receiver. But, you know, if your wide receiver department's okay and you're kind of strong everywhere else, I think I'd rather take that floor and Brian Thomas Jr., um, it, it, as more of a staple in my, in my roster. So um, I really like this player. It helps that all the wide receivers we talked about outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. I've also played with pro caliber quarterbacks. I mean, you're talking about um, worthy with Ewers who will probably go into the first round next year as of, as of right now. And, and everybody else we've talked about has either been played with a quarterback that got drafted this past season as well. Like I said, outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. So we'll see. Hopefully that translates. You know, you're already playing with quarter uh, NFL talent. So you're, you're just transitioning into that same environment and hopefully it, hopefully it transfers over. So what are your thoughts on Brian Thomas uh, Jr.? So was he one of the, the guy you were debating here with Xavier Worthy? Yeah, he's one of about four or five guys that I was debating when I took Worthy. Um, I have more concerns about Brian Thomas than I do anyone we've talked about so far. I think he's obviously a very good um, wide receiver. He's going to get open. He can he can move so he can hit the deep ball. He's got a bit of a limited route tree. I think he's really suited to be a really good wide receiver too in an NFL offense. And my fear is, is that he's going to need to be the wide receiver one in this offense with a quarterback who is nowhere near as good as we all thought would be. That said, I don't think you can talk out of both sides of your mouth when you talk about landing spot. I can't talk about Malik Neighbors. Don't worry about his landing spot and then tell you to worry about Brian Thomas Jr.'s landing spot. So still a talented wide receiver, still someone who's worthy of going in the first round in a rookie draft. I just think of all the players that we've talked about so far, he would be the highest on my concern to bust ratio than anyone else. Fair enough. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm not nearly as worried about him. I'm and and to 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 be honest with Xavier Worthy, like I'm not even going to argue if you want to take Xavier Worthy over over Brian Thomas, but I'm not worried about Brian Thomas's floor. I think he's got a high enough floor that it doesn't concern me. Um, I like that offense. I do think obviously Trevor Lawrence is better than Daniel Jones, so I'm not concerned with that. We've seen valuable uh, wide receivers with Trevor Lawrence. Um, so that hasn't been a big concern. I mean, we, Christian Kirk was killing it two years ago before he got hurt. Yeah, right. So, was. um, I'm not worried about that. Um, yeah. So that's, it's just, it's, that's, that's fair. I kind of forgot about Christian Kirk to be totally honest. So he, you know, if Thomas doesn't have to be the one in the offense, I like him a hell of a lot more. Let's put it that way. Well, well he's got help too, right? He's got Evan Ingram yeah. to help. Zay Jones is still there. Um, so there he's, it's not like he has to do it all for the Jaguars in the receiving True. game. So that, that True. is definitely nice. Um, which is the same thing with worthy that we were just talking about, right. With Hollywood Brown and, yeah. and with, again, however, the Rishi rice thing plays out and, and, uh, whatnot, they, those organizations are good right now too, right? Like the Jaguars have stability after the whole, rookie year 2021 yeah. deal with with Trevor. So that's also nice for these receivers, which is um, why I go with Ricky Pearsall with the next pick, because I think there are a lot of arguments you can have here. But when I look at all the players that I would consider here and I look at the just the overall talent and then what they're going into, Pearsall's just like 
I, I love that spot. They're they're one, the offense is gonna be great. Two, I think we're going to see at least uh by the start of the 2025 season, one less of Brandon Ayuk or uh you know Debo Samuel. So he's gonna be the number two option in this offense at worst by the start of the 2025 season. Um tied to another young quarterback that should be around for a long time. A quarterback that's very accurate, that is very good even down the field. Brock Purdy was one of the best um, quarterbacks in the league at 20-yard-plus pass plays. Um, It's all there. It's all there for Ricky Pearsall, the first-round draft capital. Um, Wasn't like necessarily the guy jumping off the board to me, but if you're going to give me a piece of the San Francisco Giants offense, potentially a big piece because they – Think very highly of him, and I can get him at one eleven. Ah, sign me up. That's a, it's a it's real close to Debo Samuel rookie draft, right? Like there was a lot of people that talked about how good he was, but nobody was taking him that high. Um, he was going, you know, in the mid to late first rounds in a lot of drafts. Um, not that Ricky Pearsall is Debo Samuel, but anytime I can get a big piece of good offenses late in the first round of my rookie drafts. Sign me up. Sign me up. That could be the tiebreaker easy. Bryce, I see you agreeing. What's your thoughts there on Ricky Pearsall? And if yeah. would you would you take anybody else here? Because there are a couple names that I could I could consider. Um, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, my, we'll talk about the guy I'd probably take here over him next pick. Uh, but I, I, I can't argue. These, these these guys are all in this like tier together that I can't argue. I will say Ricky Pearsall is one guy I didn't do enough film dive on. Um, but I do know one thing. He's a human highlight reel. I know this dude's made some crazy catches in college. I remember last year he had like the, probably the best catch in all of football, if you, <laughs> NFL college. Um, so he's got, he's got the talent, the situation right now. I is like one you're okay with sitting on him for a year. Your roster is probably pretty good. If you're taking him this late in the first, you're okay with sitting on him in, a, in an offense that's been good for since Shanahan took over. And even before that, um, so, yeah, Brandon Ayuk, Debo, who knows? One of those guys might not be there to the start of this season. But they probably will be, but it's still possible that one of those guys could get traded. It seemed like when they drafted a wide receiver in the first round that, that we might see some news the next day, but we didn't. Um, but it goes to show that they're pretty good at wide receiver, and they still drafted one in the first round. Um, so they think highly of this guy. He's going to be a part of their offense. It might not be a huge part of it right away, but within the next two years, He's going to be he's going to be a part of it, or he, he's at least going to get the chance to be. So, like Xavier Worthy, when you get guys late in the first round of uh, the real draft, they're usually landing in good spots, and uh, you really like them to fall late in your in your draft and uh, in your fantasy leagues as well. So, Sully, what are your thoughts on Ricky Pearsall? I have a lot a lot of thoughts, and they're all good ones. So, he's another guy I considered when I took Worthy. Um, I echo what you said about his ability to catch the balls. He looks like freaking Spider-Man with a webbed hand sometimes. Um, I had a guy that I, I kind of have a bit of a Twitter relationship with that sent me a message months ago and said, you got to watch this guy play. He's potentially a, a sleeper in upcoming rookie drafts. And I don't watch a ton of college football, and I don't know a ton about these guys until this time of year I start to dive into it. So I started watching whatever I could find on YouTube, Ricky Pearson, and I was like, holy shit. This guy's good. And it's not just crazy catches. He's open a lot. Um, he blocks pretty darn good for a player of his size and stature and playing in the inside. Like, he does a lot of things that Shanahan – like, I could see why San, San Francisco took him because he does a ton of things that a Shanahan-led team would want. Good after the catch, good possession guy, blocks, gets his nose dirty. So I'm thinking I'm going to get this guy. I got this sleeper all lined up. I'm going to get him later in my rookie drafts. And then the Niners pop off and take him in round one, and I'm like, well, there goes that. But, no, um, I think the writing's on the wall for Debo, to be totally honest with you. I think this is a put-up or shut-up or get-lost kind of a thing for San Francisco. They sent a message to their wide receivers. I don't think Pearsall replaces Ayuk, but I could see him pushing Debo out just because sooner or later the the Niners need to churn a little bit due to salary and other thing else. But, uh, no, I would take him as high as eight or nine. To be honest, depending on my how the quarterbacks came off the board in my drafts, I really like this player a lot. 
Yeah, and that that leads into uh, Lad McConkey going next, and and I want to say about both of these guys, right? That you're getting in the in the late first here before we get into it, Sully. But when when I have these tiers here, I'm looking my landing spot. I evaluate landing spot a little bit different than everybody else does. I'm not worried about who else is on the team. I'm not worried as much about. Um, you know, who the quarterback is. I want to know, can this organization develop players? And right. with San Francisco and the Chargers, when I'm looking at these picks here in the back, I'm a little less confident about Buffalo Bills developing Keon Coleman or, you know, some of the other wide receiver, Carolina um, with Leggett or any of that stuff. I'm less confident with that. That's why these guys – jump those guys for me is because the organization that they're in, I have more trust in developing these guys. Plus it's nice when they're also tied to quarterbacks that look like they're franchise guys to go along with it, which we don't know. Well, obviously we do in Buffalo. We know for like a guy like Keon Coleman, but we don't know if Bryce Young is that dude for Leggett and um, some of these other rookie wide receivers that most of the guys we talked about here outside of Malik neighbors, like they're also tied to solid quarterbacks, which is pretty yeah. nice because you don't get that. And, and yeah. we're talking about the 12th pick right now. So Lad McConkey going to the Chargers. Sully, last year we saw Quentin Johnston get picked there in the first round yeah. and go and fall flat on his face during his rookie year. Is that a concern with you for Lad McConkey here at, at, at uh, 12 in the rookie draft? No, I'd be worried about Quinton Johnston still, but I'm not worried about <laughs> Lad McConkey. Um, I like route runners. I got a soft spot in my heart for him, and McConkey is one of the best in this class. This class is awesome, right? So what? A, what is McConkey here? He's he's twelfth in our draft, but what is he like? The sixth or seventh wide receiver that's coming off our board? Um, you just won the ship. You're picking twelfth, and you get to pick Lad McConkey in the first round. You're happy. Right, chances are he traded that pick, but you know what I mean. Um, comes from a winning background, right? Played in or played in a, in a school that knows how to win, so he's got that going for him. Um, great hands, great route runner. Man, I, there's a ton of love about this, and he's sliding into a spot vacated by one of the best slot receivers that I can remember in my um, time watching football, and that's Keenan Allen. So Justin Herbert's going to like him. The offense is probably run heavy, but when they do go to throw the ball, there's not a lot there, right? So um, Quentin Johnson's either going to drop the ball 30 yards down the field or Palmer or McConkie are going to catch it. So I just think he's in a really good spot, good quarterback, good coaching staff, good everything, and he's a really good player. So easy for me. Again, another guy I considered taking when I when I took Worthy, I considered McConkie. To your point about tiers, these four guys – I'll take whichever one of them and be thrilled with these last four that we've talked about. Bryce. Uh, I love the landing spot for fantasy. I didn't like how it went down in the draft because as a Patriot fan, we traded this pick to the chargers. I wanted Lad McConkey on new England for all the reasons you just said, Sully. I mean, but, but for fantasy purposes, what a, what a spot to land in. Um, He, I think not only is he a great route runner, but I think that we're going to see a high football IQ uh, from this player as well. I think I think he understands this game better than most people do at, at this age. When you've heard him talk in interviews or or just see how he plays on the field when, when he's when he's looking at zone coverages and things like that. Uh, and it's on the film. So you guys gotta watch you guys gotta watch that stuff, um, whoever's watching this. So he he's gonna be a, an impact player, I think as well. What what a steal at the end of any first round draft or even early in the second in these in these super flex leagues. I, I really like this player um, I'm he again. He's probably the top of the tier of the players of what we've been we've been talking about recently for me for me personally for that same reason you said, Sully. And I think that route running transitions into the NFL better than anything else. Speed, hands, anything like that. Route running is number one for me when I'm looking at these wide receivers yeah. coming into the NFL, especially today's game. Right, like yep. guys don't have to be big and crazy huge and everything else. But nope. it's funny, McConkey is it totally reminds me <laughs> of other what Patriots slot guys right like welker and edelman he, he just edelman yeah like uh amandola. even amandola right like he he's kind of that guy so yeah i agree 
Yeah, and and for me, the the reason why I like him in that in this offense is for the same reason, right? We 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 looking at both Pierre Salt and uh, McConkey. We're looking at two offenses that are kind of going to be kind of similar, right? They are going to be run heavy. They are going to be run heavy, at least while CMC is in San Francisco. But they've always been run heavy. They're always going to run the ball a lot. Same thing with Harbaugh in LA with the chargers. Um, I, both these guys, they're real close. I think you can go either, either direction with the last two guys. I do have worthy and Thomas ahead of them with a little bit of a gap. Mm -hmm. Um, but these guys may be, uh, Pearsall and McConkey here at the back end of the first half, maybe safer prospects, but not have the ceiling that the Thomas jr. And worthy have, For sure. Um, so I, I am, I'm always going ceiling if that's the tiebreaker. Um, and it's here. So that's where that's I'm a, at with those two. That's an awesome point here, because again, if you're picking 12th and you have a really good team, you should be driving for ceiling here, right? Like, like you're probably trying to win again. So I think that's a great point. So that is the end of the first round. I didn't have a lot more on McConkey that you, than what you guys already said. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty clear cut with him. I think uh, with what you're getting, um, but that is the end of the first round.